Hello everyone and welcome to our last stage preview of the 2024 Vuelta España and this will be a showdown in Madrid. The final stage of the Vuelta España 2024 promises to be a thrilling individual time trial held not on the usual circuit of Madrid but on a 24.6 kilometer route through the heart of the Spanish capital city. Unlike the traditional parade that often concludes Grand Tours, the Vuelta España is taking a leaf out of the Tour de France book this year and we won't see a celebratory sprint finish. This year's closing stage is designed to test the riders one last time against the clock and not let them have an easy way into Madrid. For years, the final stage of La Vuelta in Madrid has typically featured a relatively straightforward circuit race, culminating in a bunch sprint on the grand boulevards of the city. The sprint has long been the showcase of, for sprinters and their teams, a last hurrah for the fast men of the peloton after three grueling weeks of racing across Spain. In 2023, we saw a break from this tradition with an exhilarating finish where the usual sprint battle was upset by a daring breakaway featuring stars like Nico Dentz, Lena Kemner, Rui Costa, Remco Venepo, Filippo Ghana, and Caden Groves. The bold move was only caught in the final 600 meters with Groves ultimately taking the stage victory and securing the points jersey in a spectacular fashion. This year, however, the organizers of the La Vuelta have decided to abandon this circuit, opting instead for a time trial that will likely have massive implications for the general classification. The decision to hold the individual time trial as the last stage signals that the battle for the red jersey may go down to the wire, ensuring that the race for the overall victory remains tense and unpredictable until the very last minute. The time trial course itself is set in the bustling streets of Madrid, a city steeped in cycling history and home to countless memorable Vuelta España finales. The road stretches over 24.6 kilometers, a distance long enough to create substantial gaps in the time trial, yet short enough to favor powerful and explosive riders who can maintain a high speed. The start is at the Districo Telefonica in Madrid, and the riders have some whiny and twisty roads in the beginning of the stage before they get a very long straight that is just before the first split time that they will come to after a 90 degree bend. Then the, the route is a bit more of a smoother bend and they have a roundabout to go around a bit deeper into it and a few more corners before they get to the second split time. And then the riders will have a few sharp bends before they come to the finishing line a bit further down in Madrid. It's a very technical course in the beginning of the ride, so that will be quite interesting for the riders. And there is a bit of elevation gain, not much, but inside the last 1.8 kilometers, the road does climb a bit, so the riders will have a bit of a testing course to handle. There are plenty of riders who will be worried about their GC positions as well, but in terms of who will be the favorites for this stage, that is quite an interesting prospect. As we saw in the first time trial, it was none other than Brendan Minolti who took the victory a quite surprising victory we don't have Josh Tarling in the race anymore either so that's a bit of a shame for the young Welshman but there are a number of riders who could be looking at this as a potential opportunity to take a victory Bruno Amarai is still in the race and he was looking very strong in the beginning Primoz Roglic we can't discount him either of course he's very good against the clock and given the course isn't completely flat, quite technical, this could lend itself to a bit of an upset once more. Kespa Eskain is a former Danish national time trial champion and can produce a good time trial when pushed. Equally, we have Stefan Kung, who hasn't really lit up the race that much this year, and he could be eyeing this up to get a Welter Spania stage win but other than that there's not too many time trial specialists within the race so there is an opportunity for there to be an upset but in terms of the gc riders who normally go very strong as well in the third week there are plenty of riders that could be in the mix other than just Primoz Roglic. Ben O'Connor has produced a good time trial in the past. Matthias Kjellmos Jensen is the current defending time trial champion for Denmark as well. So he would potentially try and move himself up in the GC if he can potentially catch the likes of Carlos Rodriguez and David Godou, who traditionally aren't the best time trialists. But there are plenty of movement that could happen. And someone like Mikael Lander is definitely not going to be liking this stage as well so it's going to be a mix between potential riders who have rested for a number of days by their teams to get an opportunity to get a stage victory in a time trial and the gc battle just solidifying itself into the top 10 that will be seen in the history books
But who will win? That remains to be seen. But I could see maybe Stefan Kroon, if the legs are there, sneak a win. If Roglic might be a bit too tired after defending in the mountains. But anyways, with that, that's basically it for this video. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel here on the Cycling Dane Extra. And of course, as always, thank you for watching. And we will see you next week when we've got some really good content coming up. So that's a good reason to subscribe. But with that, thank you for watching and have a nice day.